Welcome everybody. Today we wanted to touch on an intercropping strategy we get asked often about, which is relay cropping. We think it's a, a really great idea in our northern climates where we get less sunlight and moisture or better um, unpredictable sunlight and moisture in fall and getting cover crops established in an existing cash crop. As we start most of our presentations with what makes up a plant. So carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, sunlight, and moisture. How do we access these minerals more effectively? Well, we do that from a stimulated soil biology, which create stable soil aggregates. And, and these minerals have the ability to infiltrate the soil and be captured by biology because we've created the pore spaces and stable soil aggregates in the soil for these. So much like with all the cover crops we talk about, this relay cropping, we're focusing on the exact same principles. So as always, what we talk about with carbon and nitrogen, if we're doing cover cropping anyway, let's be mindful of this ratio. So if we have a high wheat straw crop, obviously high carbon, 80 to one, well, let's pair a you know low light, super low carbon, high nitrogen legume plant uh, to pair with it. And we can come closer to that ideal microbial diet. But really what we're doing is we have digestible, ample digestible carbon with the wheat crop and super digestible, legumes protein or nitrogen with it and it seems to stimulate that biology and give us these really stable soil aggregates so to just touch on the basic premise of, of relay cropping so on the top there's monocrop of course we seed the oats in this example the oats grow we harvest it is now if we were interested in cover cropping we sow a, a fall seeded cover crop and it has to establish itself you know later in the fall where we have not necessarily ample sunlight or in many conditions no moisture so in a relay scenario we get the the clover seed or the slower establishing legume growing with the cereal so the cereal is quicker to establish gather sunlight um, the, the legume stays lower growth uh, beneath the canopy capturing wasted sunlight establishing that root system for uh, finally when the the cereal crop is harvested then has sunlight and uh, a run on the, the moisture and just keep cycling minerals late in the fall. So here sums up pretty good what we're talking about on the left. It was uh, cereal stubble with, with clover regrowth. We terminated the day before seeding. We seeded into it and you can just see that digestible protein with ample carbon source, how quickly that mineralizes, breaks down into the soil profile to feed that biology. And then all that's happening is that biology is creating stable soil aggregates and turning those minerals right back into the, the next year's crop. So this is where we see the, the biggest improvement as far as soil aggregation, what we can test, which is a water infiltration. So pound a cylinder in the ground, a six inch cylinder, dump 500 mils of water and just time how long it takes uh, to infiltrate. So the idea is the more stable the soil aggregates, the more pore space, the quicker that water will infiltrate. And really it's not a measurement of how much water you're getting, it's, it's how functional your soil is because your soil will only be as functional as how much pore space we have for that biology, how stable our soil aggregates are. So you can see on conventional ground in our area, an inch of rain takes about an hour to, to infiltrate, two inches anywhere from 10 to 20 hours and just introducing a digestible legume or protein into that scenario the biology has the ability to keep those soil aggregates stable and we see some really amazing water infiltration rates uh, we've replicated this lots and in the the soil health world this is a pretty well known fact where uh, these low carbon high nitrogen legumes putting nitrogen into a high carbon system we can just create these amazing soil aggregates and, and have a super functioning soil. And of course, a natural first step for farms is to do a fall seeded annual cover crop. The reason why we feel a relay crop over a fall seeded crop, cover crop that is, high diverse cover crop, is um, establishment. So in the fall, we just have limited amounts of sunlight, limited amounts of moisture. You know, we get susceptible to early frosts, and these are really vegetative, vulnerable plants. And of course, we get a couple cold nights in a row and our crop gets to this height, is terminated by winter, and we're not no longer accessing um, sunlight. So it's just about the, the advantage of the relay is getting that, that root system established early. So when the cash crop comes off, it's already got a, got a well, a relay head start. So the best chance of success with, with relaying is obviously putting it uh, the relay down with 
uh, slower establishing relay down with the cash crop, the cash cereal crop. So for example, oats and clover in this example here was seeded at the same time the oats establish early and the clover just chills below the canopy until the oats are harvested, which is it's time to grow. So kind of our second option to go is after uh, herbicide pass, in-crop herbicide pass. So this field was sprayed a few days before. My neighbor, I went out with a hoe drill. My neighbor went out with a disc drill. So did the re sowed the relay crop directly in. Uh, the results were much more favorable for the disc drill. Placed directly into moisture, little disturbance for the oats. It jumped out of the ground before the oats were able to close in the sunlight canopy completely and we had a really nice relay crop where we went in with a disc drill. And that's the advantage of, of, of a disc drill is good seed to soil contact. We can get that, that relay crop growing as soon as it hits the ground or germinating as soon as it hits the ground. Um, you know, we're not dependent on a rain where, where broadcasting we would be, and we have a herbicide option for the cash crop. So if we got some weed pressure, but of course the disadvantage is exactly that if we don't get quick establishment and the cash crop is too far advanced, shuts down the sunlight and, and there's no sunlight left for the relay crop, it will whittle away and die. And then of course, we're always susceptible to dry conditions. If it turns hot and dry in July and we're already not exposing a plant to sufficient sunlight, it's a pretty high stress condition and, and our results can wander just because of those two pretty big factors, sunlight and moisture. A more ideal timing into cereals is probably more the two to three leaf stage. So shown in this picture, you can see there's still lots of, of topsoil in between the rows. So if we went in with a disc drill, sowed a clover, it, it now has time to establish before this oat crop totally fills in the canopy. So as the picture before was uh, probably four to five leaf, this two to three leaf is more ideal timing. So the third option as far as a relay goes is broadcasting or valmaring and harrowing in. Um, this is a, a decent option to, as well. You can cover a lot of acres in not very much time and it's easy to time with the rain. So, right, we're not getting great seed to soil contact. If we're just blowing it on, we definitely need a good soaking rain. If we're getting a bit of seed to soil contact, like the picture, a little bit of disturbance goes a long way. So, uh, yeah, having that, having that ability to put seed on quickly right before rain, it's definitely a, a benefit However, the disadvantages are we do absolutely need that rain. If the seed sits on the surface for a week, well, there's a pretty good chance that that crop is going to totally enclose the sunlight canopy and those seeds don't stand a chance. And definitely in a, in a zero till scenario, not having seed to soil contact, it's just we're going to get very, very low germination and it's unsure exactly when germination is going to happen, when we're going to have enough moisture to and wet conditions to to have that seed actually germinate on the soil surface just to talk about termination instructions obviously if we're going with an annual relay winter is going to terminate um, but I, I honestly think a superior option is a, a biannual cover crop if we're talking a relay scenario be just because we can capture sunlight and moisture in the spring as well keep an energy source flowing into the soil and and really if we're using legumes start to cycle some nitrogen and, and start mineralizing that high carbon residue on the surface. The advantage of terminating early is, of course, if we're in a dry condition, that clover plant that we see in the picture there is going to be using moisture. So if we're really dry in the spring, it's a nice idea to terminate it early. You know, that plant dies and those roots start to decay and break down, feed that biology, and you know, we're gonna start mineralizing quicker. The disadvantage of that, of course, is we're not photo we don't have a living root in the ground. You know, this clover is a legume. We're it's going to cycle nitrogen, keep growing, adding nitrogen to that system and breaking down that, that plant residue. So an early termination, we're not going to get the mineralization we otherwise would, but a nice option if conditions are dry and, and moisture is a concern or lack of moisture is a concern. So this is a practice we use on our farm pretty regularly. Uh, use a relay and then uh, take advantage of wetter, more moist conditions in the spring for that uh, clover or that biannual legume to grow, use up excess moisture, but keep cycling minerals, keep 
keep adding nitrogen to a, syst- a high carbon system, which is where the, the, the cash cereal put you in the year before. So the advantage is there are lots of them. A living root in wet conditions, it's using moisture. We're creating stable soil aggregates, cycling minerals, balancing that C to N, and of course, protecting the soil. And this residue will, it, it's a low, low carbon, high nitrogen, super vegetative, very digestible for biology. This residue will not be around for very long in this activated soil. But of course, the disadvantage is that crop that we see in the picture, it's going to use a pile of moisture. So on a year where, where we don't have lots of spring moisture, um, it would definitely hurt the cash crop that's going in. The third option for our cattle farming uh, friends out there, so it says forage, and so a cash crop, we can graze it, we could calve cows on it, but harvest the clover as far as forage for animals, and then we can go back in with a short season crop, say buckwheat or millet, you know, late in June or maybe early, early July, but it's just we've spread out our risk, we've captured um, maximum amount of sunlight, and we, we lower the risk. The roots decaying from this clover crop are going to break down quickly. It's going to feed that crop that's that that we're going that short season crop that we can put in after. But of course, the disadvantage are disadvantages is you either need haying equipment or cattle, uh, and and this crop can go a little later into June. And you know, in our northern climates, we have already uh, sunlight and moisture as limiting factors. It's just conditions can get even more challenging from July on when we're trying to grow a cash crop. So something else we like to talk about when relay cropping or fall seeded cover cropping is, is we get we need realistic expectations. Most of the sunlight and most of the water in, in the growing season went to our cereal cash crop. So we haven't offered the, the undergrowth much of anything other than a little bit of sunlight and a little bit of moisture. So we're not going to see, you know, 5,000 pounds per acre dry biomass. This is These two pictures are a pretty good representation of, of what type of fall growth we're going to get. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse, but that's why we like to use biannuals in our relay systems because we can capture sunlight and moisture when they're more prevalent in springtime and when conditions are not favorable enough for us to get on the field. Uh, the other obvious uh, exception is pre-harvest glyphosate is no longer an option. We want these plants to keep living after the cash crop is gone and, and cycle those minerals. So if you're interested in this, don't sell the swather too quickly. Um, we're, we're either letting the cereal crop stand there to dry down naturally, or we swath and uh, get that cash crop off and, and give the relay a chance to grow. For more information on this relay and other intercrops, check out our website, coversandco.ca. Love to hear your feedback and hope you enjoyed. Thanks for listening.